No, we're building we're 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 building power generators and technology to build starships. That's what. That's, okay, that's to go to the edge of the solar system. Go to the edge of the universe. We're not interested in solar system. Solar system is there's nothing out there of any consequence. Okay, and have you met any aliens? No, no. I, I know people who claim they constantly communicate with them, so and are in touch with them. But no, I haven't had the pleasure or displeasure. I really, really have you ever ta have you ever communicated with them through your friends? Say. Uh, yeah, we 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 attempt to have these surrogate little discussions. But oh yeah, yeah and I, because you work with Lizette, isn't what's her last name? Larkin. Uh, Larkin, yeah, and she wrote the book uh, Talking with Extraterrestrials, mm -hmm. and um, sounds like she communicates with someone out there. Yeah, she's, uh, she, you can't attribute her level of intelligence to going to school. It's just not there, that type of thinking and the type of philosophy that uh, she says that they advocate in the way that they see life and how we should live it is completely... Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not anything that we currently enjoy. Yeah. Right. So. So we, you've had dialogues through her. Yeah, yeah. We're currently trying to set up contact. Okay. But, but I don't know if we'll ever have any success. Now. Okay. You, so you don't know what the what the ET thinks of you. I know, and I. In your project. I, I, I don't know whether or not they even think on that level. We are trying to find out if they do, and it's been our experience that women seem to run. The, future and and extraterrestrial societies are supposedly led and directed by women so uh, the female side of the equation so we're very pro that idea because it, uh, it uh, women don't like war and don't like the the consequences of war and we should have more women in congress we'd have a much more peaceful business of government. And doesn't a woman figure um, pretty prominently in your movie scenario? Yeah, we got a, the, the, the judges and the prosecutors are women and we kind of look at them as the ultra terrestrials, the folks that, that don't need spaceships to move around, they just think and they're there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, we're very, we're very avant-garde toward the idea of women being the leaders of tomorrow, not men. Now, didn't you used to be friends with John Lear? Yeah, yeah, we were good friends a long time. Okay, so did you go to Area Fifty One with him, or no? How, I refused you know him the, from? the night that he and Bob Lazar got stopped out there by the Wacken Hut guys and all of that and all that whether or not it all happened. If it happened, it seemed to me to be a kind of a setup routine. And Dr. Ulig, George Ulig and I were friends, the director of research and development, Hercules, and we didn't want to go there. We didn't want to go with John. We thought there was something smelly about it. So, so we didn't go, and it pissed John off no end. Uh -huh. so. but, but you remained friends after that. We, I knew his mom and dad before that time period. I go back to this late 60s with uh, being affiliated with his father and his, you know, his mother, Moya, because she was very close to my friend John DeLorean, that kind of thing. Uh huh. So what can you tell us about John DeLorean? It's, it's, it's a great sadness, believe me, when I say that he's gone because he was one of the great men of all of the, the 20th century in terms of his thinking of the idea of non-obsolescent cars by building cars out of stainless steel and making cars where they didn't wear out, which is very possible, and they don't want to do it, you know, so... I thought... Uh, I worked very closely with him. We were, we've been friends since I was... 15 years old, I met him out on the Bonneville Salt Flats when he was sponsoring Mickey Thompson's land speed record car. So John and I go way, way back. And I thought he was one of the great men of all time. He really was. Sounds like he's to some degree an inspiration for what you're doing now. He was a grand mentor. He, he knew how to fight once he knew what he was fighting. And he and I were very close friends and he allowed me to kick the crap out the FBI, so it was fun, you know, to be very frank. And the FBI is quite a formidable group of folks, but when I had John DeLorean as my associate and client, it was easy to beat their brains out. We but you're not them. a lawyer, so when you say he was your client, in what way was he your client? I was his chief of strategic planning, you might call me his chief investigator like I am for Ramsey Clark.
I've been Ramsey. You're Steve using present that. tense. You're still working with Ramsey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still, uh, but I didn't do Saddam. I'm, I'm not affiliated with the Saddam defense. I left him out. I'm not bulletproof. Ramsey's got a halo, and nobody wants to kill Ramsey. But I'm not sure they wouldn't do it to me. So I, I it's, uh, I, I haven't. Uh, let's put it like this: I, the stories I could tell you, I don't want to tell you about that. That's a, it's a very dangerous game, very, very dangerous to defend Saddam Hussein. He's had a couple of his lawyers murdered by the Ministry of Interior, and uh, I think that, that the whole trial, not saying that Saddam's a good guy, that the whole trial was a charade and it should have been in The Hague, uh, a la Milosevic, and that trying him without a Sunni judge on the bench and uh, assassinating his lawyers is not the way you conduct a trial. You don't conduct a trial by killing off somebody's defense lawyers. Uh -huh.